Hello everyone and welcome to Mark Plays Pyanodons, a, a new Factorio series on the Lawrence Plays channel. And we're going to be taking a look at how uh, Mark has been getting on with the um, Factorio Pyanodons mod, which as I was saying in the episode 0, um, is an absolutely mammoth undertaking. So I've had a bit of a look around the uh, around his factory. Um, there's a there's a fair amount of it. We've got the, most of it is it does just more or less fit in the area I can see on the radar down here. With a couple of mines up here, digging up some quartz ore and apparently iron ore and bringing them down down into the base area. Um, and yes, there is a lot going on down here, and I'm going to wish I had the uh, the um, space exploration navsat to, to have a look around. But let's let's start off with um, this thing I've discovered here, which is on the end of a big construction chain. And this is making what appear to be uh, little planter boxes full of uh, full of flowers, uh, but are actually called automation science packs. So um, yes, good. Let's have a, let's have a look through and see how this works. Now, one thing to note here is that he's producing the uh, the first the first of the science packs. And we, if we look through the uh, the list of what's been scienced, we can see that yeah, he's been um, he's done lots and lots of things that use just that science pack and that's and there's now he's not quite finished them all there's some military ones uh, genetics uh, and then some well, I don't even know I've no idea what most of these a lot of these things are but there's a few extra things that have have yet to be have yet to be researched so he still still needs these science packs in quite large quantities but these seem to what are these 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 take you need to take in some native flora so he's got what is quite literally a flower mine down at the other end of this belt that's digging up digging up the plants and sending them along here um, we also need to chuck in these planter boxes, so that's pretty much right with what I was suggesting it was, and some small parts that could be, who knows what those are for. Um, so the and then so as you can see we can then sort of run back through the recipes like this and we uh, we can we can make a, a planter box by putting <laughs> ash and soil in an empty planter box. Okay, fair enough. So you, you need to get some ash and some soil. Uh, you make the planter box out of wood and stone bricks and iron. Jeez, that's quite that's quite complicated for a planter box. If I'm being honest here. And then the parts over here are copper cables, iron and bolts. So you, why you don't need those to bolt the whole, the bolt the box together in the first place, but need it to make the automation pack? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and think about it too carefully because it'll make me go cross-eyed. But that is the recipe, and it's um, so that's again taking a fair number of different ingredients and be somewhat complicated. Now I notice down here that wood isn't as easy as you'd expect it to be either, and those, those robots are getting in the way. There we go. So in order to make um, just make straight up wood, you need to get some logs from somewhere. So presumably, if I find a tree and chop it down. If I chop this tree down, yes, there we go. I get a log out of it, um, and a lo so so it looks like. I mean, that makes a certain sort of sense, really. You take your log and then you sh you uh, clean it up in a is that a sawmill? It's a wood processing unit, I guess. It's almost a sawmill, uh, and that'll turn it back into the into the uh, the actual uh, lo into the log into the uh, into the planks that you then want to use elsewhere. That said, the icon does appear to still be just you know logs straight out of the tree. But let's not worry about that too much. I guess there's too much going on in this for them to be able to redo the art for absolutely everything. Um, but yes, he's also going to need all the various metals. So he's got this copper mine here and the iron mine off way off to the north that we we saw earlier, um, and that's coming. What we're doing here, so we've got right. Okay, so he's got a row of inserters um, passing off this belt onto the um, onto onto an alter, onto another belt, and that I believe is because he hasn't actually developed splitters yet. So at this stage of the game, the um, it's it's complicated enough that you can't make you can't make splitters. He hasn't managed to research those. But we are loading. I don't even know what this is. This is this is kerogen. Okay, so that's a fuel cell. Um, it's sort of somewhere between wood and oil, it says. And so you can you can, you can dump that onto the um, onto the belts along here. It'll flow, it'll be it'll flow down here with the iron ore and then be loaded into these things. Well, we're using a raw coal here as well in that one and the kerogen in that one. Um, so those are both both suitable as fuels. So he's able to feed them both in off this off this belt here. Maybe they come out. Of the, I'm guessing they probably come out of the same mine. Or maybe not. No, actually, no. I will take that back. So we've got we've got the um, the coal coming out of Got the coal coming out of the mine up here, I think. Let's go and have a look at that. This is a stone mine. That's the, that's why I'm confused. <laughs> ah, I see. So the the stone mine digs up a certain amount of a certain amount of stone and a certain amount of kerogen. So he's got a, a sort of a system all the way around here that is taking out virtually all of the uh, kerogen and putting it onto the um, onto the other belts here. So he's digging up from here. He's digging up a mixture of um, stone and kerogen, which is getting dumped onto this belt. Filtering out the kerogen at least to an extent as it comes along here, and also splitting some of it off onto this belt using all of these inserters. The uh, the stone then gets passed down here to, for other sort of stone type purposes, with the, where the kerogen then just flows along the belt here. But it's also being topped up with raw coal that comes from another mine that's way up here in the north, uh, which this one just digs up the raw coal which we're using for power. 
um, but then also using it to top up the fuel belt down here. So if there's not enough kerogen coming through, then we'll add a little bit of uh, coal in as well, just to make just to keep it topped up and make sure all the machines have enough stuff to run off. And that makes a lot of sense because you don't know if you, if you had a, if you had a re reduction in the amount of stone bricks you needed, for example, so the stone wasn't being pulled through as quickly, then you don't want the uh, the iron and the copper mines to stop just because you're not pulling any kerogen through from here. But then on the flip side, you don't want the kerogen to overflow because you're not using it up fast enough. So the coal needs to be a lower priority, which is how all of this system works. And that's why we've got these sort of slightly patchy looking belts. The other complication down here, though, is that when you cook your um, your iron ore, not only does it produce um, iron plates like this, it also produces ash, which is he's then having to deal with and having with it onto this disposal belt here. So you you have by you have byproducts even from right at the very very early stage where you're trying to make the most basic of ingredients of iron plates. You're still ending up producing a certain amount of ash that needs to be filtered out over here, and then some of it has even managed to make it through the system. And there's 20 down here in the, in these chests. So it's it's not a perfect system, but it is getting rid of most of it. It does seem that he's able to get rid of a lot of this ash, though. So this is all flowing up here and then being dumped onto... Okay, there is a dis what appears to be an ash disposal belt up here. And that's going into this machine, which pulls in all of the ash and then turns it into uh, coal dust, iron oxide and soot. And these appear to just be being dumped into um, dumped into, 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 into these chests at the moment. Or actually, where are they? Are they going into here? And this takes no, this takes in the soot and then turns it into um, into various other products. So from this, you can actually generate a, a small amount of actually useful stuff. So we've got lots of the uh, all the ash is being circulated around here, being dumped into this machine, which separates it out into soot and then these these things that we don't don't know what to do with at the moment. This machine then takes in the um, the one of those that you can deal with the soot and then turns it back into various different ores um, but also sometimes produces ash as well so then there's another inserter on here that takes any ash that makes its way out of this machine back into here to go round and round and round again so yeah you've got a lot of byproducts coming through here and, um, and need to deal with them somehow there is also whatever's coming along this belt uh, which is coming out of the the what is what even is this So this is coming down. Ah, oh, this is coming down the belt from the mines. I suspect these mines are going to be producing a certain amount of uh, of of, um, sort of, of of ash as well. So if you look over here, we see we've got we've got burner mining drills. They're quite happily fueling themselves off their own supply. So we've got a belt that we've got the belt brings the uh, coal out onto here, then it loads some back into here. But it's also producing ash, which is then getting put out onto this dump belt. So I, I strongly suspect that this but these belts coming down here from far far away. Well, they're taking they're taking the fuel up to the burner mining drills. We've got the um, the, the iron ore coming back down from there. We've got whatever these gem crystal things are, which I presume is the um, the other one up here, the quartz. That makes sense. So we've got quartz coming down one side of the belt and then the ash coming down the other side. And over here we've got the uh, the quartz is then presumably being put into these machines, which do quartz stuff. Oh, they melt the quartz into molten glass. Okay. Um, and, 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 and pull out. Then the idea is they also pull out the ash and dump it onto, onto here, presumably. Except, oh no, they've been black. They're blacklisting. I think those are set the wrong way around. So yes, they're supposed to be dumping the ash down out over to here, but there's been a been a mistake, and they're taking out the wrong thing. And also, this belt isn't going to be able to. It, this belt is never going to run anyway. So it's not not been the end of the world yet. But um, eventually, yes, we'll want we'll want to get rid of the ash along here. That's probably why this has stopped running. Uh, that and because it's run out of fuel actually. And so that is creating molten uh, molten glass and putting, or is in theory creating molten glass and putting it into this pipe. And up here we're doing a similar thing with the the, oh, the molten glass is then being turned into actual glass. Uh, oh, okay. So here we go. Yes, it's being piped through into here, be turned into actual glass. Um, however, that requires hydrogen as a fuel, um, and that has, isn't being produced yet. So that presumably, I, I suspect, this is essentially where Mark has got to. So he's been building across. He's got he's got his um, first science pack up and running here, and now his current project is trying to act, is trying to make glass, and that's a three-step process where you bring in the bring in the quartz, turn it into molten glass, and then cast it down into actual glass ingots. So that's going to be the next thing he does. What else is happening around here? This is this. There's so much going on in here that I, I don't understand any of it. So it's quite exciting. Over here, we are pulling in coal and turning it into. Uh, we're processing the raw coal. Okay, uh, this is turned into again more more rust, coal, coal gas, and tar. Lovely. Uh, so those are being put into various pipes and things. The 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 the, uh, the tar is going down here and seems to be going into a pipe that goes nowhere. Um, oh, okay. Most most of it goes into ah goes into here. Yes, there's a tailings pond. So we, we're 
Uh, we have 172,000 um, uh, Tark tailed in here. I'm guessing this is just a sort of a disposal system. So it's, it's, it's like the clarifiers in Angel Bobs. It's, it's a way of just getting rid of fluid that you don't want to, don't want to have to deal with. You can pump almost anything in here and just be got rid of probably although actually no looking over there on the right no i think these might just be storage pools he's got because he's got 171,000 of a million in there so it's not getting rid of it it seems to be just st stockpiling it and eventually presumably we'll be able to pump it out and and do something more useful with it once we have a um, an actual use for it the um what else is being used from here so the uh, the coal oh, the coal gas is being pumped into this pipe and taken down here and not being used taken over here where it's being used by these machines, they bring in the coal gas and some and some kerogen, and they are doing. Oh, they are digging up. They are producing digging up aluminium ore. So these are a, a different type of mine, fluid mining drills. So these te these require the coal gas to work, and then and then that allows you to dig up aluminium ore, presumably. So yes, we got, uh, yes, aluminium ore. So we can dig up the aluminium ore and turn that into aluminium somewhere down somewhere down the chain. Okay, so that's different. That's another another type of machine. So in the same way that vanilla requires you to use sulfuric acid for uh, mining up uranium, this one requires you to use apparently coal gas. Uh, in order to dig up the aluminium ore, that's that's interesting, different. I'll uh, yeah take that happily, um, and that's so that is that's why he's he's processing all of the coal over here. The coal and the uh, the rust is then being put into these these uh, these um, boxes over here. Now we're putting the rust in it. Okay, now the coal is being passed into here to do the processing. The rust is just being stockpiled for now and will be presumably disposed of or used for something else later. Uh, this looks like fairly standard power generation. I don't think there's anything weird going on here, which is quite surprising. Pumping up water, boiling it in, well, boilers, because I'm burning, burning the, the uh, well, this is raw coal, but, you know, it's, it's a fuel anyway. Um, now, of course, they do also produce ash, because burning anything in this mod pack appears to produce ash. But that's basically, that's producing the electricity that all the rest of the factory is using. Oh, I haven't talked about these machines yet. What about these? These are soil extractors. Okay, so this is presumably you can just put these anywhere, and they dig literally just dig up the soil. Uh, you put it. Oh, you put in water apparently, and it pulls up. Well, limestone apparently, uh, which you can then. Com are these just different recipes you can use? Yeah, I think they are. So you can, you can dig up soil, or you can dig up limestone. Uh, and yes, we can. Yeah, we can change the recipe in here, so it, it'll um, it'll dig up whichever one whichever one you need it to. And we're stockpiling the soil in here in order to make those these these, these grow boxes over here. What was it we were short of? It was it was the it was the planters which are short of planters which are short of iron plates. So I could I could help a little bit by grabbing some iron plates out of box down there and putting them into the box up here where they're obviously supposed to go. And then this'll this'll kick into motion. There we go, there's a planter, fills the planter up, passes it up into here, put a load of flowers in it. And then that is apparently a science pack. Oh gosh. So apparently that's how that's how science packs work in this. Um and yes, I think that is now has now basically covered everything. I will, actually, I will come over here and talk about this uh, this flower mine over here because it's a, again another different type of mining drill. So most of the, most of the things we're mining up, we've got over here. We've got the standard traditional burner mining drill. It's taking in it's taking in a fuel. It's dumping out it's dumping out some ash. We're dumping, then disposing of the ash on a disposal belt like uh, with all of the others. Um, these ones take in fluids and um, and and. and Goodness knows how you, exactly how you use coal gas for uh, for, for lubricating a, a mine. I don't know, but apparently you do. And then down here we have a nice gentle um, collector. So this 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 one, rather than being a sort of a harsh mine that digs digs ores out of the ground, we've got these two little floaty robot things that fly around and pick up flowers and then put them onto the onto the belt over here. So the, we've now got this nice stream of, of, of flowers coming out that can be um, can be used for whatever we need them to be used for. Now it describes it as a bio reserve. Okay. Um, and we're digging up native flora. Yes, so uh, various types of various types of flowers. So yeah, this it looks like as I was saying, this this is the uh, the very first science pack of um, of Pyanodon. So it's um, it's a little bit beyond the sort of the having to make iron plates and no iron gears and copper plates to put together to get a little uh, beaker of red juice. But uh, he seems to be—he um, seems to have things reasonably well in hand. Uh, we've got the, as, as you've seen, we've got the uh, the basic metals over here: iron and copper, and, oh, and the wood as well, of course, to make the planters, and then the plants themselves and the soil to go into the planters. So that seems to be about enough to get things essentially running. And then over here, oh, of course, the, these are all burner assembly machines as well. Um, presumably, real assembly machines won't be researched until a bit later on. Here we are. Here they are. Um, and that's automation two. 
this automation science research has actually only got burner assembly machine one and then the one further down that I spotted I can't find here we go this one gets us burner assembly machine two so it's going to be a long time until he gets onto electric assembly machines by the looks of it oh that's got to be um that's got to be frustrating <laughs> well um Good luck, Mark. That's all I can really say to that. Um, I hope I've covered everything you've you've done here. I, I feel like I've gone round and sort of poked all the things. Oh, I haven't, I haven't mentioned these. Oh, these these are science labs. Okay, so these are no, nothing particularly uh, special about those. But if we come over here, I can then put these 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 um, these automation science uh, planters in, into the science lab, and it'll start to science as you can see. I'll take it back out, put them in here, because uh, we can see this one better. It does sort of appropriate sciencey zappy things, and we'll uh, and we'll and we'll generate, and, and now we can start looking into cellulose a bit more. So yes, I think that is everything. Everything has been covered now. I've, uh, I feel like I've gone over and I've poked at all of the machines. Um, if you think I've missed out anything, whether you're Mark or anyone else, do point, please do point it out in the comments. Oh, there, actually, no, there's another machine here. I haven't pointed this one. This one's making steel. It's uh, steel plates, and that's made out of coke, limestone, and iron ore. So that's sort of, sort of realistic. It makes a change from just bringing in extra iron, I suppose. And that's why he's digging up the uh, the limestone over here. So that makes makes sense. We're going to need all of that for making making the steel. Um, but yeah, things seem to be flowing reasonably well. Um, I don't know what else to look at, but I'm sure Mark will give me some pointers if I've missed anything out. So please come along uh, probably next week for the uh, next instalment of this. It depends on how much time he has to uh, to play it in between uh, playing space exploration and you know having an actual real life and stuff like that as well. So uh, yeah, I hope this has been interesting. It's a sort of a very very early view of what goes on in Pyanidans. Um with any luck, he'll send me updates over often enough that I can sort of keep up with what he's getting up to and won't get completely drowned in the sheer pianodanity of the whole thing. Uh, no bets on that one because it is going to be an absolutely enormous uh, undertaking, both mostly for him, but also for me trying to work out what on earth he's done. Still, it's an exciting challenge and uh, hopefully it'll make for a good series. So, thank you for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel and come along uh, next time and to see, to see what's been done next. It probably won't be another science pack, but it'll probably be an, an, a, another another sort of radar, local radar areas worth of, uh, of buildings, knowing the way this thing goes. <laughs> so, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.